All right, all right. Hold on, though. Hold on. A. I'm going to tell you what A was first. What's going on, everybody, and welcome back to Bourbon of the Week. My name is Chris. I'm going to be your host for today, and today we have a double blind for you. This is like my new favorite thing to do. Now, I was in Indianapolis a little while ago with Dusty Dan's Whiskey Reviews, Katie and Ethan Turk, Hello Again Whiskey Friends, Christopher David, Adam Shelton. We met up with Bourbon as well, and while I was out there, I accidentally left my headphone. Jeffrey Wack found it was generous enough to ship it back to me with some double blind samples. So these two we're going to pour up tonight. These two we're going to do for the Patreon-only page, so make sure you check us out, patreon.com backslash slash bourbon of the week and join that so you can see that video as well. But let's pour these up and let's try and guess what they are without embarrassing ourselves. Grab some paper and a pen because we're going to take some notes and see if we can't guess what these are right here. These are double blind. Jeffrey Wack has an exceptional whiskey collection. So this is always fun. I did this in a video that I'm going to put out when our barrel picks come out talking about that Indianapolis trip, but this is head to head. This is B, this is A. I'm going to switch these just so I don't confuse myself. The hardest part about doing double blinds for me is this could be literally anything. This could be Irish whiskey. This could be scotch. This could be Canadian whiskey. Could literally be anything. But we're going to try these out. We're going to take some guesses on, I don't know, proof, age, maybe a distillery if we can think of one. But we're definitely going to tell you which one we like better and then find out the solution. Time for the traditional sip. Cheers, y'all. Higher proof, higher age if I had to guess. So this is my first glass of whiskey for the night. I will say there was a lot of rye influence on this. I don't know if it's high rye or maybe it's just straight up a rye, but I will say that rye spiciness hit the back of the palate as well. Ethanol, definitely there. It definitely seems like it's a cash drank whiskey of whatever kind it is, but that rye seems to be like in the back of my mind right now. I will say I thought it was a little bit older because it dries out the tongue, has a little bit more of that oakiness on there, but that could also be like maybe a double oak dry. We're going to get back into that in a minute. We got to be careful. We only have a little bit of whiskey with these one ounce samples. Let's Let's get into glass number two. I want to say this is a battle of the rise, but the question becomes, they almost, this almost seems double oak to me. It definitely seems a little bit darker. When you're doing double blinds, you don't have to put these in blacked out glens. But, mm, I guess they're the same. Maybe it was just the angle of the light. Are these two double oaked ryes? That would be fantastic. I've had a few recently and I really do like them. Proof wise, they're definitely very close as well. These might be like, I don't know, maybe different single barrels from the same distillery. That is definitely in the back of my mind. But proof wise, I'm gonna have to go back one more time and try them. This is tough because I didn't have that base point, right? Normally when I go into a blind like this, I'll have a 100 or 110 proof whiskey that I'm very familiar with. So I know what that 100, 110 proof is like. That gives me something I can work either above or below and say, hey, this is higher or lower than 110 proof. Now, both of these seem higher than 110 proof, but it's like how much higher? How much did that 110 proof burn compared to what I have here? I will say it's very important to pick the first one as close as you can because again, you're gonna work off that. If you think this is 130 proof and this is a little bit lower, you might say 125, 124. But if you say this is 120 proof and this is a little bit lower, then you're into those 110s, 115s, and that's a very big difference. So we're going to go through one more time. Actually, I already had this one twice. Let's even things up with this glass over here. That had like an apple, like a very, very green apple-y note on the end of this. I think that's what it was that I got. I got, I feel like I got to take another sip right away. There's definitely like a, like almost a sour apple, like a Jolly Rancher green apple, which was one of my favorite Jolly Ranchers when I actually ate them. But I feel like I'm getting that green apple, like that artificial green apple flavor on this. Not a bad thing, but that mixed with that rye spice and that I'm assuming like a mintiness to this. It's very, very, what's the word that I'm looking for? Christmassy or evergreeny, if you know what I mean. See, this is why I want to get a few sips in. As I take a couple more sips here, it definitely gets easier to drink as we go. Let's go back to this one over here. That age and that double oakiness is kind of falling off for me. Originally, I thought that, especially on the first glass over here, I got a lot of dryness, a lot of tannins, but those kind of lingered away as I drank more of these. These are becoming much more rye-ish to me and a lot less with that double oak, but I, I still just can't put my tongue on what the proof of these are. I want to say... Maybe like high teens when it comes to these, like 119, 118 when it comes to the proof on this. Originally, I was thinking like 125, but there's no way it can be that high. 
No, because even when you do like a big breath on the nose here, normally that ethanol kick will maybe like get the tear ducts working a little bit, but I get nothing on that. These are both fantastic whiskeys too, whichever they are. I will say that Appley Jolly Ranchery flavor over here is giving me a lot more to work with. This one kind of seems a little one-dimensional next to this one. Both glasses of whiskey are fantastic. Do not get me wrong. But I will say you got to pick out the nuance in these things. And this one does seem to have a little bit more complexity compared to this one over here. Again, both very complex, very good glasses of whiskey. But I'm digging this one a little bit more. Jeffrey Wack, what did you send me? These are good. This one seems higher proof than this one. I will say this one does seem like the lower proof. <laughs> now I don't know again, but back and forth, back and forth we go. We got to make some guesses though. I've held you guys up long enough. We're going to save a little bit so we can pick our favorite at the end, but I am going to say that both of these are rise. I'm going to get rid of that double oaked concept for right now, but just remember that I did say it in case it happens to pop up. I'm going to say both of these are rye. I'm going to say this one proof wise is higher than this one. So I'm going to say that, what do we add over here? This is a, I'm going to say a is probably like, I don't know, 123. And then B is probably like, I don't know, 118. I'm going to say like 118, like 118.5 to get myself a little bit closer just because I think that's fun. I will say distillery wise, I was almost thinking like, what could these be? I don't think these are driftless. Now, here's here's a thing that very well could have happened. I believe that Jeffrey Wack got some samples while we were down at Backbone there were some there were some double oaked rise in those samples there's no way right is that what we've got here if he did that that would be genius move i'm almost positive there was a double oaked rye that we really enjoyed I don't want to say that, but that would be that would be very very good because obviously I drank them when we were down there. This is a couple of months ago. Now that we're talking about it, I'm mean, Jeffrey seems like the type of guy that would do that. So I'm gonna say I'm gonna say these are backbone, double oaked rise. Maybe I might be 100% off on that, but that's what I'm going with. The question is, which one do I like better? And both of these are fantastic glasses of whiskey. Let's go back one more time on this glass here. I feel like this one's higher proof now. Listen, I like this one a little bit better since the beginning. This is very close, but that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to give the winner to be here. Very, very close. Tomorrow I could drink these same glasses and like A better. But for right now, let's find out the solution with B as our winner. We actually didn't talk about age on these. I originally thought that these were a little bit older when I drank this one, but now that I'm thinking about it, that double oak dry makes a little bit more sense. So it is probably a little bit younger, maybe like that five year mark on both of these. I'm going to say four to five years on both of these. Again, I think they're very similar glasses, whatever I happen to be drinking, but there's only one way to find out. Let's get the solution. I got this cool knife for my patrons. It's got sprinkles on it because I'm an ice cream man, Perchucci's ice cream. Shout out. Let's open this up. so easy and the answer is again we picked b as our winner let's talk about it all right all right hold on though hold on a i'm gonna tell you what a was first midwinter's night dram which is a rye finished in port i did not get port on this at all also jesus christmas I said 123 proof. Guys, this is 98.6 proof. This is Act 7, Scene 2. When I got in, what do I have? 9, 10, and 11? I think I have 9, 10, and 11. If the proof, I didn't even look at the, I saw what the second one was, but I didn't look at the proof. If I thought that was 123 proof and it was 98.6, I know we're going to have a problem with this one as well. Old Scout Rye Port Finished MGP. So at least we were we were MGP, right? And we were finished and we were rye, right? It was just the wrong finish and the wrong, oh my gosh. This is Old Scout Rye Port Finished MGP, 103 proof. So listen, I've been drinking whiskey for a little bit still. I haven't stopped drinking whiskey, but I will say for a little while, you can go back to my YouTube channel. It's been a while since I've done like any type of actual sit down, 
thinking about proofs and anything like that. So I'm gonna that's what I'm gonna chalk this up to. But both of them rye. I didn't get port on either one of these. I got candied apple, not not any type of port finish. That's kind of crazy. I wish I had a little bit more now. But I did say that the old scout rye, if this means anything to anybody, at $70 about and 103 proof was better than the Midwinter's Night Dram Act 7 Scene 2 at 100 bucks. Old Scout's pretty good. I do like Old Scout. And apparently I like Old Scout Rise. So that's where we're going to leave it for today. But listen, we do have two other samples over here. I'm going to pour these up now and try these out for the Patreon. Make sure you check that out. Patreon.com backslash bourbon of the week. Check us out on Instagram. Click that like and subscribe button here on YouTube. I would greatly appreciate it. Please don't drink and drive. Always drink responsibly. Stay healthy. Stay happy. Stay double blinded because I can promise you, you're not going to know what it is. Cheers, y'all.